Okay, so, so what I've tried doing then is I connected our DeWalt power cleaner up to the garden hose at full 60 PSI like it should be. So let's see if it does any better now. Oh yeah, see? Much better. Whoa, whoa. Guess who forgot to take the screen off? Wasn't paying attention. That's okay, it's gonna get washed anyway. Uh, okay, now watch this. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, now let's try rinsing it and see what we got. Okay, now I've already done this little area right here. And so you can see with this kind of pressure coming out of the bucket, just relying on the siphon hose, I can feel the difference. It doesn't feel as much pressure as you get when you have it connected up to the garden hose. I think that extra 60 PSI from the garden hose is what really gives you that extra oomph. I mean, you can see it's making a little bit of a difference here, but you really have to go real slow. But you get much more pressure connecting it right to the garden hose. Here you can see some hints of green and kind of blackish dirty mold starting on there. So let's see how well it does. We'll do low pressure mode right here, and then we'll switch to high pressure mode right here. You can see right in this area, the 550 PSI on the high setting was able to clean some of the black that was starting to form here on the bricks. So definitely on the paper bricks here, this thing's doing a great job. Okay, so now we're gonna try our DeWalt power cleaner here on this concrete gutter. And this was just cleaned by the Homeowners Association a month ago, so it was nice and white. But now we've got all these stains here, here, and all the way down the line there, probably from the leaves that have landed on there and rained on them. All right, so what we're going to do is try it in the low position with this turbo nozzle, and then in the high position and see if either of these modes is successful at removing any of these. Let's start right here. Yeah, so it looks like the low setting is doing Maybe some of this black stuff here. But it doesn't seem to be doing the, the other stuff. This might be more of a fertilizer rust type issue. All right, so let's try the high setting then. Now the high setting has noticeably more power. You can feel it. It's, it's louder and you can feel it. And you can see it clean through the more of the darker areas quicker. See, it's getting some of it, but still not the rusty stuff. Okay, but right here you can see the dividing line where I was going here. Even if you hit a white area, it'll still clean it off even more because you never realize how much dirt is on there until you clean it off. See that? And you can see the difference here between the, the two spots. So, yeah, the high is, is powerful, but we'll have to see what this material is here. This might be something for our rust remover to have to try. Now we're going to try to hit this dark spot here with the low and then with the high. So here's the low. See, the low cleans a little bit too. It feels a little weak, but it does clean it. You can see it. You can see it cleaning it. But you have to go really slow in the low mode. There's just not a huge amount of, of power behind it, not a lot of pressure. If I had to guess, it's probably about half. It's probably about 200 PSI. Now let's go high and let's see what it does. Much more noticeable and it very, much more rapidly cuts through the dirt. Yep. 
Okay, so let's see the difference between shooting it on high and shooting it on low. So here's high. And now we'll put it on low. The amount of pressure involved when you have it on the low setting really looks like it's more suitable for just rinsing off a car. Okay, now we've got the perfect specimen, folks, here, because this is my daughter's car. She just came back home a few days ago after driving across the state and then back and collected up a whole bunch of bugs going across Alligator Alley there. And so we're going to see if the low setting or the high setting will work on this and if we need to try any of these other nozzles other than like the turbo, we'll see if it, if it can clean them off without the aid of any soap or without the aid of any bug and tar remover. This car is just absolutely filthy and it's hard to believe that we actually washed it a few weeks ago for her right before she left. And now just look at the wheels are all dirty here. The, side panels. I don't know if she went Bahan or what, man, but holy cow. Let's get to work. Let's see if the old DeWalt power cleaner can handle this mess. Okay, so I'm going to make sure I'm in the low setting here, and we'll do the low setting on the passenger side, and then we'll do the high setting over here on the driver's side. So let's get busy. So it looks like the low setting is taking off at least half of the bugs. Here, let me stop for a second. This would be really good to get into these grills in here to get all the bugs out of there because you normally can't get in there with any kind of tool. Maybe if you want to sit there all day with a toothbrush, knock yourself out. So the low setting is getting at least half of the bugs off. So now we're going to switch to the high setting and see how we do on the driver's side. I'm going to start backed off a little bit just to make sure I don't damage anything. There we go. So this is taking them off too, pretty good. Yeah, so it looks like both settings are working pretty good here, folks. Now, it's important when you're driving on the highway and you get home to your destination, it's so important to get those bugs cleaned off as quickly as you can, because that's when they'll come right off with, with a little bit of soap and water. So both of these are going to need some help. Now, I want to try changing out the turbo and put this one in. This is the, the 15 degree. I want to see how well this does. Okay, take that off. Let's put this on. Okay, so let's give it a shot. I'm just going to leave it on high and we'll see how it does. I'm going to come in easy on it. Yeah, so the closer I get in, it helps a little. But this is really not what you want, folks, because if you have to start using a hugely aggressive stream like this, you're probably just going to strip off your wax. So let's enlist the help of a couple of friends. Okay, so when the going gets tough, the tough get McGuire's and mothers. So these have sort of, sort of been my go-tos for, uh, you know, bug and tar remover. And so over on our carbuyingtips.com channel, we did a great uh, product review video a few weeks ago that we uploaded that I'll put a link to down in the description for you, where we compared the McGuire's hair with the mothers and also with the Turtle Wax brand as well and we tried uh, different methods of removing the bug, bug and tar. At least I can tell you Meguiar's has always been my, my go-to uh, after trying several different ones on the market. So let's just go ahead. Normally you'd want it on a dry. I'm just going to leave this wet, I don't care. Normally they tell you to put it on a dry surface and not in the sun either. I keep it wet. The idea is to just keep it lubricated and wet there. So I'll just go ahead and spray the foam. And with the Meguiar's, we have to give it a five minute dwell time which is why I usually come by and spray a second coating on it about halfway through just to make sure it stays wet. Now I'm just gonna do the, the cloth here on this one area because this is how we normally do it. I just want to show you. We just wipe it off, see? So you can see how it cleans off all the bugs in this little spot here. It does an excellent job, all right? So there it is with the cloth. I wanna see if now that we've soaked it with the McGuire's, if we can now go back to using the turbo nozzle and will it help to clean the rest of the bugs off? Okay, so here we are back in high mode with the turbo nozzle on and let's see what it does. It looks like that it, that it really does need some physical agitation like with a cloth to get the rest of these other ones off. They will come off, they'll come off pretty easy, see, look. They're just coming off with my finger right there, just rubbing on it.
So again, you can see it gets it somewhat clean, but look, see, you still got a lot of film there. No pressure cleaner and no soap by itself will ever clean. Uh, that dirt is just kind of stubborn and it really wants to cling to the wheels and it's, no matter what car you have, you, you always want to use either a brush or some type of cloth or something to get in here and physically remove the dirt once it's been loosened by the soap. I'm gonna put it on low for this little section here. So the low is doing good, it's just a little weak and you have to work more at it because you see how, how each time you make a swirl, see how it leaves like marks that you have to come back and get it again and dwell on it, see? Whereas if you put it on high, it's like, hey, give me more. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, baby. Yep. We'll just put that nozzle on. We've got the white nozzle going here. See how it gives you a wider, I, I wanna see if it can clean wider like this, see? It's not quite as powerful as the turbo, but you can see it does clean off. So this is really a special case of something really nasty that she drove through, but this will clean off most dirt, but I would still rather, if you have to, if you have to dig in on a section, I would use the turbo nozzle every time, and then use this white one as, to rinse off your car, because look how wide of a swath it gives you, see that? So from now on, folks, this is the white is going to be my, my rinsing bit, and the turbo nozzle here is going to be what I use on the tough areas and the wheels, and even then, don't expect it to clean the wheels. Okay, so now we're going to test out the soap gun that came in the box with the DeWalt Power Clean. So what I'm going to do is I have the white tip on here to give us a 40% wide swath, and I'm just going to wet down the car real quick. Then we'll take this off and put the gun on, and we'll try it in low mode and high mode, and we'll see if either mode gives you better sudsing than the other. Okay, we'll just take the wand off. You push in and twist like that. So this one goes this way like that. Okay, so I'm going to make sure we're on the low setting, and I'll do the passenger side of the hood and the windshield with it, and then we'll switch to the high setting, and we'll do the driver's side, and we'll see if it's any better. So we're on the low now, and let's get started. So the low is kind of as we showed you in the other video, it gives you a lot of water with very little suds. Even though it is soapy and you can still clean with it, it will be useful. But let's try the high now. Now we're set to high. Yeah, so you can see that there's really no difference in the consistency of the, the soapy water between the two. You do still get nice, nice lubed soapy water there but it's the same no matter whether you use the high or the low. And a lot of it has to do with, this is a poorly designed soap gun in my opinion, because there's no adjustment that you can do on this thing here to maybe thin out that hole a little to see if you can force the soapy foam through it and make it even foamier. <clears throat> okay, so let's see what we've got inside the box here. And then here's your adjustable knob, so you just turn this to adjust how much soap you want to come out. See, the DeWalt Power Cleaner at the end of the wand is a standard quarter-inch quick connect. So you slide that out of the way, you plug the bottle on, give it a good tug, make sure it's on there, and it's off to the races, folks. Okay, so now we're going to try the DeWalt sprayer with this new Greenworks soap bottle, and we'll see if it does any better. So let's see. Hey, yeah, look, it's doing really good. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Now, this is what I'm talking about, folks, right here. Look at that. See, that's what you're looking for right there, man. You see that? All right, let's see how we do over here. Man, I am loving this, folks. Oh, yeah. That's okay. So look how the Ryobi appears to go on a little thicker. This is more like that snow foam that we're kind of uh, accustomed to, to seeing. Now, what I don't know is how well the Ryobi soap would perform in the Greenworks bottle.
Okay, so now we're going to try our DeWalt power cleaner on our wet saw here for the tiles. So I just completed a big remodeling project at my friend's house, and I always like to give it a good cleaning off. I want everything to be perfectly clean like it looks brand new. And I do that after every job. So it looks like it easily did the pan. Now, sometimes it can come back white again after it's done. So you gotta wait till it's dry to see really how thorough a job it did. All right, now sometimes all the chunks of the cut tiles like to accumulate in the groove, so I wanna press it. Oh, this is pretty good, so you can see, you can see the great job it's doing cleaning out this channel. Some of this is thin set, so it's not likely to come off unless I use salicylic acid. Okay, you're still always gonna be left with a little bit of film of dirt that really needs some mechanical agitation. I just whip out my, my little multi-purpose soap wipes here. So if you're finding this video useful so far, hey, would you do us a favor, please? Give us a thumbs up down below that tells us that you like us. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, folks, all I can say is why haven't you? You can see all of the great world-class videos that we've uploaded for you. We cover all sorts of remodeling projects around your house. We cover kitchen remodeling, and as you saw here, the microwave install, kitchen cabinet installations. We cover all sorts of bathroom remodeling. We cover uh, tiling floors around your house. And we also cover you know, laminate flooring. And we also cover all sorts of engineering disasters and, and you can see all of the tool review videos that we do for you and we do drop testing as well on them. And then we're also very well known for our shop with me is in the big box hardware stores finding you the best tool deals out there. So make sure you click on that subscribe button down below because after all it's free folks. And when you do that make sure you click that little gray bell icon next to it. That tells YouTube to alert you whenever we upload a video because you've seen our videos. You know you don't want to miss one of ours. They're very nice. So thank you so much for tuning in with us this week, folks. And we will see you on the next one.